Just received word that the governor has changed his mind um, on uh, uh, statewide masking policy. Uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, as you know, that was one of the things that the doctors uh, asked me to ask for. And uh, uh, very briefly, I'll go through that uh, uh, with you. Um, this will go into effect um, tonight at, uh, um, I believe, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It uh, actually is already in effect, according to this. And, um, uh, or no, I'm sorry, I I'm incorrect. It goes into effect at 12.01 p.m. on July the 3rd. So that's tomorrow, right? Um, and uh, it requires that you wear a mask. Uh, when you are uh, indoors or when you're outdoors and you can't be six feet away from people not in your family unit. Uh, the first time you fail to do that, you'll get a, a warning. The second time you could receive a fine of up to $250. Um, uh, here in Dallas County, uh, we will endeavor to uh, enforce that in the light way that we have uh, with the businesses. You know, we already have, of course, a mask ordinance here. So what's the difference in the mask ordinance we have here today and the mask ordinance that the governor put into place? Well, uh, in the mask ordinance that the governor put into place, uh, you're also required to wear that uh, mask outside if you, if you can't stay six feet away uh, from others. Uh, it has uh, all of the same opt-out, not opt-outs, but exceptions like eating food, um, uh, you have a medical condition, you're driving alone in your car that we put in ours. Um, and so uh, that will be in place and it's very good. Uh, we're very uh, glad that that uh, happened. And I want to thank all the doctors and business people who pushed so hard for that to happen um, uh, because now that will be a regional and statewide approach and that really should help us with what we're seeing because what we're seeing, uh, folks, is pretty scary. It took us 92 days to get to 300 cases a day. It took us 22 more days to add 400 and get to 700 cases, which is where we are uh, today. A couple of other things uh, while I'm um, uh, saying uh, our appreciation of the governor for listening, there were uh, some other things that he, he did this week um, in response to uh, the letter. Uh, they loosened uh, the unemployment rules so that uh, I think it was starting next week, you were going to have to go search for work if you were unemployed, even in the middle of this pandemic. And that's been loosened and that was the right thing. We appreciate that. They did put back into place the rules for daycare centers that we requested. We appreciate that. And of course, we're just seeing the uh, order, but it appears to backdoor answer a lot of the questions. Uh, that the doctors had about places like, for instance, cigar bars, where um, you're not eating or drinking, but it's just not possible for you to wear your mask all the time, or a place with an incredible amount of indoor exertion where you um, are not able to wear your mask um, all the time. And it appears that those would not be um, uh, allowed under the governor's order, and hopefully we'll have more clarity on that as the evening uh, goes on. Things that weren't done in the order, but I want you to really strongly consider doing it, that the doctors asked for. Um, it, they asked that bowling alleys, arcades, concerts, movie theaters, uh, maybe uh, gyms where you can't wear your mask were closed, but we'll see. Uh, group youth sports where you breathe all over each other. Public pools, day camps, and other social venues or activities that do not allow strict physical distancing and masks to be worn all the time uh, be closed. Now, all those were not closed, but I want to encourage you, don't go there. In the middle of this pandemic that is obviously out, completely out of control now, uh, please don't go there. Um, so um, let's talk about the weekend. and. Uh, um, you know, we got a big holiday weekend coming up, and that's really the most important thing for us to talk about today. You know, when we, when we put Safer at Home in place, it did have an effect. The doctor said it began to have some effect um, within a few weeks on the, on the 
the uh, the rise, but we didn't actually see the numbers go down, the, that curve flattening go down for two months. And when the governor did the Open Texas, took away those requirements, opened some businesses, we didn't see the numbers go up appreciably for about five weeks. Do you know the only two times that we've seen the numbers move um, within a month in a big way? The answer to that question would be Easter Passover, 14 days later, we saw a big jump. And Memorial Day, 11 days later, we saw a big jump. What happened? What happened is 28 million Texans and 7.6 million North Texans celebrated Memorial Day. And they got together and they let their guards down. They saw some extended family. They did the sort of things that we do for holidays. Unfortunately, this holiday, and Phil will talk about this more, and this really stinks, um, and I hate even saying it, but what the doctors are asking is that you find a way to celebrate this July 4th with only your uh, people that you are around daily, your, your family, your roommate, uh, because things are out of control, and we saw that huge jump um, after Memorial Day and after Passover Easter, and we cannot afford it. it um, uh, our hospitals, our economy can't afford it. You, if, if we let our guard down this weekend, we can set our economy back by months. We can uh, have uh, a lot more people sick and a lot more people die. So it's really up to all of us. Keep those celebrations super small. And when you are around anybody else, wear your mask. But anybody outside that home that you're with um, every day. We saw, by the way, our hospitalizations in last month uh, not only double, but go up 125% here in Dallas, 140% uh, across the region, and that is not sustainable. If we keep doubling like this, and those hospitalizations w are like these underlying case numbers, okay? Took 92 days to get to 300, and another 22 days to get to 700. Um, and so it's not necessarily true that it took near, j just because um, it took nearly a month to double last month, it'll take nearly a month to double this month, particularly if we don't um, really uh, guard ourselves uh, this weekend. Um, to, uh, it had not made a move like that even over the last four or five months uh, before then. So this is very, very, very important. So um, we're asking you not to go to large events, to stay home as much as possible, um, to, to always distance at six feet, and to importantly to wear that mask. Let's talk a little bit before I turn over to Phil about our testing sites. Tomorrow is a holiday for most people, but you know, you're off from work, but our test sites are open. Okay, so the test sites are open tomorrow. Now. Let me explain a couple of differences in the test sites and why that is, okay? So we have, the AAC has closed and, and it's been replaced by the University of Dallas. If you're a, a Cowboys fan of a certain age, it's right by the old Texas Stadium site. That is not federal testing. That is locally paid for by the city of Dallas and the county of Dallas and therefore we don't have to go to the federal test site that I'm beginning to think is on the North Pole and it must be accessed by very slow reindeer because it's taken us about 10 days to get the test turned around, okay? And so at this new site, it's our hope that similar to people who have insurance, um, you're gonna be able to get your test turned around in, in two or three days. And that's very, very important, frankly, because it's, it's hard for you to make your best medical decisions and there's an eight to 10 day turnaround for your test. And it's hard for us to trace uh, those who you've been in contact with and help keep them safe if we don't know what's going on for eight to 10 days. Um, okay, the, there are a thousand tests at Ellis Davis Fieldhouse. Those tests, unfortunately, as well as our walk-up sites are the tests that are still taking eight to 10 days. Know that we are working hard and part of the reason I'm telling you about it today is because I'm hopeful that a lot of members of Congress and others will see it. We are working hard to, to shrink that time that it takes for them to turn around those tests. 
One way to do that, and we've been asking the governor and the feds this for two months now, is to not send the stuff off to your federal lab, wherever that is, but just to give us the reagents, the chemical that runs those tests. We've already bought the equipment at UT Southwestern and Parkland. Let us do it ourselves. We can, do, we can turn these things around in two or three days. Or if you want to keep doing tests, we, we use all the help we can get, but get us the reagents so we can get our people tested uh, in a timely way. Um, those tests um, are available and we're working every day to try to get the turnaround time faster for you. Um, also, here's a big difference, important thing for you to know about the site in Irving, the University of Dallas site. Since that is paid for not by the federal government, but by your tax dollars as either Dallas, your Dallas County tax dollars uh, uh, or CARES Act funds, or your City of Dallas tax dollars or CARES Act fund. Um, that is only available to people who live within the county of Dallas in any city, Dallas or any other city, or, or there are a few people live in the unincorporated areas. If you live in Dallas County, you can get a test there, but you have to have some proof that you live in Dallas County to get a test there. You do not need a picture ID, a utility bill, almost any, a library card, Almost anything will work, but bring some piece of paper that indicates that you actually live here to get a test uh, there. Also, those sites are getting clogged up uh, very quickly. Uh, the federal sites, one of the other challenges with the federal sites is they won't allow us to have any appointments there. It's just first come, first serve. So people are showing up at 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, lining up, and we're usually running out of tests sometime in the afternoon or, or late morning um, so if you do want to test at one of these sites I suggest that you get there early um, on that look this is uh, obviously not where we wanted to be okay um, in July um, it's very it's beyond frustrating um, that we are where we we are but um, the important thing for us to focus on now is yeah, frankly, is not how we got here at this point, but how we're going to get out of this. And the way, and we will get through this. You know, I, I keep saying this, but we will get through this. This masking, these doctors are saying that this masking is the single most important thing that we can do to protect one another. Uh, all right, we're going to do that. We're going to make those good, smart decisions. Moms, uh, whoever is the head of the family there, making those decisions for the weekend. We're going to make good, smart decisions. You can get that information, by the way, at DallasCountyCOVID.org. You can get a color chart of what the governor has opened and whether or not the doctors think it's safe for you to participate it's in both English and Spanish. But we will get through it. Um, let's not get mad at one another. Let's not, um, you know, let's show grace to one another. Let's show grace to those people who, for whatever reason, are not wearing their mask. Nicely remind them, but don't go off on them. Um, because, you know, it's, it's a scary time, and, and we need to show grace to one another. But we will get through it if we all move from selfishness to sacrifice. It's a big sacrifice that I'm asking you for. I know you've got traditions on the 4th of July, and I'm asking you to put those aside and be sacrificial and stay home with, um, with just the people you're around every day so that we have our best chance of this not getting a lot worse uh, two weeks from now.